just hit the one or the, the one before it. I'm thinking just hit the one. Like don't hit that one before. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just yeah. hit the ah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With this hand clapping pattern. Yeah. So they, and that person keeps the tala. Type like this. So, so I've been playing it with a lot of Indian musicians, and for me, you know, first thing I noticed is when I played with sticks, it was too loud, and then. And then I play with brushes sometimes, but with the brushes I missed some of what I could do technically with sticks, you know, it wasn't quite the same. So, so I started working with, you know, all the different sort of bundle things that are out on the market, and none of them felt quite right. Most of them didn't have much rebound, and so I started working uh, with an engineer, and, and we came up with, you know, what now has... It's called the Talawans, yeah. and is and Vic Firth, you know, is is marketing these, and I have uh, two different versions. And these are made of birch, and there's twelve dowels, and there's some foam in the middle. Yeah, and the foam, which no one has ever done before. No, makes them so they really bounce a lot. Yeah. they're very they feel really easy to play with. It absorbs some of the shock, so they don't break, uh, like some of the other ones break. They don't break so easily. And uh, and then there's you know bamboo which is uh, even a tougher wood. These you know I, they're very difficult to to break these. And uh, and there's only eleven dowels in the in the bamboo. And the, just the one less dowel actually makes it significantly thinner feeling. So so um, so I developed it by, by because I was playing with tabla players and. And Kanjira players, you know, Indian drums that are not very loud, and and it was a way of me playing with them and and uh, blending. But they're pretty universal. I mean, you can use them if you're playing a you know a rock tune and sort of unplugged with acoustic guitars, and if you want that sound, or or if you're playing in a you know situation where you, you want to play quieter and and still get not it's in between the brushes. And, But you, uh, you have some interesting D D D W stuff to show us as well. Yeah, the D W. Well, I have the, pra the. What did I do? Oh, here it is. The practice pad, which is coming out very soon. Backstage, so using this for warming up and you know practicing in the hotel room on the road. Because I've always liked having these, these pads that you could put on your leg like yeah. this. But uh, I never felt that any of them were sort of massive enough that they really felt as good as when you get a nice big practice pad. So it's just more, it's a little bigger, it's a little thicker. And it's shaped for the leg as well. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so that's coming out uh, very soon, and then uh, and then there's also a pedal to go with it, a pedal pad. Okay. I put the symbol on top of his accordion case. And if he knew. <laughs> and now we have it on tape. Yeah, what do you think of that? <laughs> All right, cool. Is this on purpose? Yeah. 
the you like the sound? Yeah. It's a good sound, right? It is. But see, here's the idea. Remember what I talked about of if with the with the laws of physics. And yeah. of course I'm no physicist, you know, but there's certain laws that I work with. And you know, it has to really to do with rebound, setting a stick in motion and keeping it in motion. And it has to do with balance points. Yeah. So if I find here's the balance point. See, right here, if I hold the stick here yeah. and keep it in motion, it's like bouncing a ball. If it goes back here, yeah. You know, so you don't want to hold the stick back here because it doesn't have any rebound. But once you find that po point where it rebounds, you can keep it in motion. So once you keep it in motion, as long as you keep pay respects to the balance point, you can move it. And, and so, you know, whether it's, doesn't matter where it is, it, it'll c continue to bounce. So that's the idea of that, you know. That's a little hard to do on a practice pad. <laughs> and then whether it's to your fingers keeping it going, or the fi our fingers on this hand, as long as you hold it right here. Yeah. So. so are you using this when you play live as well? Not a little bit, but not much. It's just for fun. Yeah. Right, it's just going between. That's, the that's like the perfect. Uh, it, it's not drumming and it's not hand drumming. It's somewhere in between. Yeah, something in between. So that that's that's what's the idea behind that. So the principles behind that. So so with the with the practice bass drum pedal, the idea is. That, that I wanted uh, DW to work on is something small enough where I can just carry it around in my pedal bag. So then if I want to practice when I'm on the road, whether it's in the hotel room or, you know, backstage, warming up before the gig. So we came up with something we do, just go like that, put this on, and you're ready to go. So, and it's got the Velcro, so doesn't go anywhere. Big rubber. Yeah. And then you put put that on. And you're ready to work out. If you want the double, you know, put the other one in. And and when I'm on the road, I always carry a a second pedal just in case. I've you know I've really never had to use it, but it's nice to have a second pedal just as a backup. So you can keep that if you want. You could keep that in the dressing room and you know warm up before the gig. So. So I set this up, and I have the you know the whole drum set. Oh yeah, <laughs> right here. So, and then you can put it either way, depending. This I'm sitting a little low here on this couch. On this couch, on yeah. the comfy couch. <laughs> yeah. So. This is what you're doing just before the gig, every gig. What I would do is say, think about the tunes that I'm going to play. Yeah. You know, and then... then just going through the tunes. Think about... A little awkward, this angle. Yeah. Mm. 
but that's that's the idea. So it's it's nice. It's just a nice way to get ready for the gig. Uh -huh.